doing here is we're making some camouflage net and we're using um, wire mesh to make the net instead of, you know, I think people often use, um, what's that shit that people use? Gauze. But the thing about gauze is it comes unraveled at the ends quite easily. Um, this it doesn't and you can cut it out into a, a nice square piece. If you look on, um, you know, online or, or in books, um, you can find out uh, the actual sizes of the nets that different countries used. Like, for example, the Germans, I think, had a 5 meter by 5 meter net, and the Russians had 4 meter by 4 meter. You can scale it down and cut it out if you're as geeky as me, which I'm sure some of you are. Um, so, with this mesh, it's very rectangular. So what I do is I just pull it out so that these rectangular pieces become squares. I don't know if you can see that in the in the uh, in the actual camera. So yeah, we make the rectangular or the sorry the uh, not rectangles. Um, they're sort of diamond shaped meshes, but you can pull it out. And the great thing about this mesh is you can shape it really well, um, and you know have sort of put it on afterwards or you know move it around things it's not floppy like like gauze so it's a bit more controllable really and what I'm going to do now is show you how I sew dental floss in so it looks like the um, burlap sort of strips that they they would sew in for different textures um, so these square ones, I think, were common with the Americans, and the Germans did it as well. And then the Germans and the British also sewed in, um, um, or wove, weaved, <laughs> weaved, wove. They had, would weave in um, random patterns, too. I don't know what was up with these square shapes, because it doesn't seem very... Uh, like a very natural pattern. It seems to almost draw attention to something um, rather than camouflage it. Um, but I just take dental floss and thread it on a needle and start to sew through. So I'll come through and I will crazy glue down the end so that it it's somewhat stable as I go. Um, and then go from there. So I'm going to do this because my battery is starting to run low and I'll show you um, I'll show you once I get it glued down and I'll also show you this is the other one I've done where I've actually attached the net already and you can see how it sort of forms over the sides. I'm just going to paint this all after the fact, a little dry brushing and whatever. This type of German net was made from um, sort of like distressed burlap that was kind of fluffed up into balls and then woven into the net. And it's not a very random looking pattern when it's lying flat on something like a roof. Um, but the stuff that's sort of tied up and, and held up in the air um, looks very much like, like leaves. And when the light passes through there's some shadows going on and things that are very natural looking, but it's surprisingly not very natural looking when it's lying flat. Um, it'll look better once I dry brush in the actual net. Um, and there was another variation of these that had these little bow tie looking things, which look actually quite stupid. Okay, so I've, I've sewn through a few of these um, you know, sort of grids with the dental floss. And this is just like wax dental floss. Um, I prime it with just, you know, regular spray paint primer. And so far the paint sticks even though it's wax. I think the primer might kind of melt through the wax a bit. Um, plus you don't really touch the net that much. So yeah, I haven't really had a problem with the paint coming off even though you would think it would with wax. So I've just crazy glued, as you see, I just crazy glued that first ribbon on 
for my square. And these squares were put on very random. Um, so, yeah, the size is very... Um, so that's what's it's kind of like an abstract art piece. And I've just threaded this through a needle. Right then, here we go. So now we have this ammunition dugout finished with the camouflaged net over top. Um, so yeah, what I did is I started to paint it, what you saw, and then I placed it on the ground after everything was painted. I did all of the, the groundwork and everything, stuck this down. I glued these two ends on first and then carefully push them down to make it look like the weight of the uh, net was drooping over. And then at the back I pushed all these ends down and crazy glued it little bits here and there um, so that it stayed nice and compressed to the ground. And it compresses pretty well because it is um, uh, aluminum mesh. So it really does conform but I, I wanted to keep um, pressing it down. So. Yeah, you just do little bits at a time. I was just sneaking little bits of uh, crazy glue underneath the net here and there and then pressing it down, mostly around the edges. Um, but I did a couple in the middle too. I had to sort of use a, like a dental pick to get the glue in behind and stick it down. And uh, then I made some little bushes. These are just made out of... Um, this is oregano twig, so if you get oregano, yeah, like the oregano spice, the twigs, um, you can just break them off and stick, you know, this is that micro leaf stuff. I put crazy glue on it. I use crazy glue because I find it glues quickly and less of the leaves fall off. So crazy glue, jam it in the little leaves and there you got it. And so I just wanted it to look like you know, it was freshly dug out and, and they, they were trying to hide it from the air. Um, so they put a, a net over to block off the entrance from the air so there wasn't the shadow. And then they flipped some branches on top just to break up that sort of square looking ground. I suppose this could just be also a regular just shelter. Um, that would be part of a trench system. This is the second camouflage net piece I did on the bunker. Um, it's a different style. I found this uh, type of camouflage net on a site called Lone Sentry, um, which is a great site. I will take a minute to talk about that. It, it has, uh, I think it's U.S. Army intelligence stuff from the Second War on um, German, German field, like, well, there's a lot of different stuff on it. There's German field fortifications. There's different kinds of netting. Um, they also cover the Soviet army um, because the Russians were fighting the Germans much longer. So there's a lot on German and Soviet tactics. Um, there might be, there might be American stuff in there too. Um, but yeah, that's where I saw the diagram of this particular camouflage net where they tied little bunches of some kind of fluffy material in there um, and then I just guessed at the colors um, 
yeah, a little bit of artistic license. Um, so the mistake I made is I didn't paint this one first before I put it down because it had all the little balls to go on, right? So I, I thought, um, I thought that might mess with things, but really I should have painted everything first, um, then put the net down, having been painted, and any dry brush or whatever, and then put the little tufts on. Um, because I put it all on first before I painted it, and I thought I'd just be able to dry brush it all, but that didn't work. And I had to paint the net in by hand. <laughs> so that was a bit of a dick. So save yourself the trouble if you do something like this. Um, and uh, paint it first, for sure. Um, so what I did, I put the little uh, cleats in for the net. Sometimes they would droop it down the sides or whatever, but because this has a three-way um, option for the machine gun, I just put it on the roof to sort of obscure it from the air. And I put a couple little stones on the end to weigh it down. So it looks pretty flat, but yeah, I think that's how I chose anyway. Um, and then there's there's this little side wall. Um, with, with some more of these little cleats in. And then I put a, like a, a piece that had been chopped in half just on the side to obscure the corner. Those sharp corners from the ground really give it away. And then on the other side, I just put, uh, you know, one of my little branchy camouflage things that, I, you know, one of the guys inside just put it up against the corner to sort of uh, obscure it. At that harsh angle and they put some over the path to hide the path and then they just flipped a couple on top of the roof haphazardly to kind of break things up from different angles it, it has different uh, kind of qualities too if you're looking at it if you're looking at it from the front I'm not gonna tip it up because there's a bunch of guys inside if you're looking at it from the front um, it looks a bit different it's kind of cool as you move around it and sort of changes the quality of that uh, particular type of net. Um, yeah, but the only thing I would recommend is definitely paint it first. And this, I magnetized the roof to come off, and then there's some Germans inside, a MG42 gunner, and of course he can move to different different apertures to fire out of, um, and a couple ammo guys. So I'm playing crossfire. We really change our rules quite a bit uh, at our home rule rules, but in crossfire, three guys represents a squad. So this is like an MG, HMG squad. Uh, also with crossfire, they usually base heavy weapons on two, but we put three on because there usually is a full squad. Like I think an HMG squad had six or seven guys just to carry the ammo and that kind of thing. So it qu kind of represents that. And then, of course, if they get hit or killed, they can be taken off the board. I'll show you this. I can take the roof off. but So we have from the from the ground looking straight forward. It kind of obscures the, the top of the bunker as well. So yeah, that's, that's it for my net video. Um, there's other, obviously there's other kinds of net and you could probably figure out all kinds of different things to weave through the net to get the, the sort of canvas strips. Um, you know, the British had the Hessian tapes, you could add that in easy enough. This stuff also squishes pretty well over tanks and things, um, conforming to the shape of the tank. Uh, so you can preform it, then paint it, paint the tank, and then stick it on the tank. Um, and afterwards I just hit it with the, uh, that awesome uh, AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, so that covers up any of your uh, crazy glue and what have you and it looks pretty freaking dope. So that's it for our camouflage net video and tune in for more hobby fun times. I'm not
You have failed to push some buttons below human engage motivation sequence.